Hello everyone, this is Flammy and welcome back. We're here with part two of my base build. What is a base build and what is part two? All right, so a base build is when I go through the entire decision making process where I build a new base. So you guys can follow along and watch and uh, I'll talk not only about base building but also to random strategy stuff as well. We are gonna be doing a couple of attacks even to try to get some more resources just to sort of mix things up a little bit. And that's what we're gonna do to start with. After that attack's done, we'll queue up our army and then go into some building. Well, in this one actually, we're probably gonna finish destroying this remaining base and then we'll start building it up so hopefully we'll start doing that by the end and then depending on how long it takes us to train troops we will possibly have another attack towards the end so our army is completely trained as you can see from right here and we also got another a replacement army queued up so let's go ahead and get at it i have been uh looking for mainly gold i do have some elixir projects in mind but i'm not very close to affording them so gold is the name of the game in the last one, I got a couple good ones. Both of them were over 100,000. Initially, I thought I might have to aim a bit lower than 100,000, but you know what? I think we'll stick to that because we've been able to find at least two so far. Part of the problem right here is I am down around, uh, I'm silver one right now, which is pretty low, so I'm facing a lot of Town Hall 6s and Town Hall 7s. Uh, in fact, Town Hall 8s like this one are pretty rare. So uh, what does that mean? Well, that means these lower level guys, they have a, a big loot penalty assigned to me whenever I attack them. Me specifically because I am a Town Hall 8 myself. It would not be as big of a one if I was lower Town Hall level, but it's based on your relative Town Hall level. So when I'm attacking someone two or three levels lower than me, it's huge. So yeah, especially Town Hall 6s are pretty much unreasonable to attack. We've got a Town Hall 9 right here, very poorly upgraded. Uh, yes, very, very, very poorly. Unfortunately, they don't have any resources really worth mentioning, except for the Dark Elixir. Uh, but I don't think 230 Dark Elixir is worth attacking, just because I'm not very close to an upgrade. And, uh, well, honestly, 250 Dark Elixir is like a couple hours of, uh, the drill. Um, if I was rating for Dark Elixir, I'd be a lot higher in the trophies, probably about 300, 400 higher. Here's a good base, though. And uh, up there, a good loot would be 2,000 Dark Elixir, but anywhere north of 1,000 would probably be a reasonable one to attack. But obviously, by comparison, 233 was not very good. All right, so this guy has got some resources. Uh, they're going to be in the center, so last time I found an inactive base. Hmm. So I could attack this to get those. Um, so it's lower than the other ones I found, so maybe I could skip it. I think I'm going to skip it. So ideally, I, I don't mind attacking bases which are have a bit less if I don't have to commit as heavily. So just raiding the outsides. But uh, ones like that one it, where it's all in the center, ideally I'd have a little bit more in it. So I think I'll just keep searching. I don't really mind uh, searching a bit more to try to find just the right base. Because uh, finding the right base means you can uh, attack more frequently and it actually turns out to be more effective overall because it's more efficient time-wise. And time-wise is the primary factor. Resources is definitely part of it, but other than that, uh, how much time I actually spend in the game is probably the more significant number. Yeah, it is the more significant number. What, what do I mean? Sort of, kind of. All right, there's a good one. All right, perfect. Okay, this is another one where they are inactive. So the vast majority of the resources, if not, if not every single bit of them, are going to be in the mines and collectors. So, mines and collectors are not many up here on the top, but down here and over here are the gold mines. Uh, five gold mines, is that accurate? So, Town Hall 7. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's right. For, oh, there's six out here. There it is. All right, so solve that mystery. We are definitely going to be attacking this guy. Air defenses. Uh, he's got one air defense on the left side, so minions might be effective in this case. Let's go ahead and... Yeah, let's go at it with uh, giants to start with. Giants I'm using for distraction. And then spread out other infantry guys to uh, start just doing damage. So barbarians, why barbarians? Well, they're also going to soak damage, but also going to get stuff out of the way. And in a couple cases, get resources. So I'm going to place archers primarily where I think that they're going to go for the gold mines as soon as the buildings are destroyed. Because that is the purpose of them for right there. Um, I've got a couple gold mines here. Level 11 and level 10, which is uh, what's allowing me to get such a big loot bonus. I've got a lot of resources in them because while this person's inactive... Um, they've got some big loots, so thank you very much for being inactive, and thank you very much for le having level 9 and 10, uh, gold mines especially. Because Elixir, they got a bit of a lower level, so, uh, understandable that I can't get quite as much of that. Alright, now the rest of it's going to be over here on this side. So, come in here. Uh, da da da. I'm going to bring in the minions. Hmm, that should be good. 
some more distractions. Uh, archers took out one minion, but those minions should do good. Bring in some more archers to shoot over the walls. And then some archers down here. This is a nice, this right here is a nice high level collector. So I want to be sure to get that if possible. Not required, but desired. Did that rhyme? Required, desired. Yes, it did. All right, so there is going to be one collector up here, which I could go for as well. But I'm not super concerned about getting that one. Uh, as you can see, only 14,000, so... Sort of like the last base, I left out one collector, although there's a really, really low-level collector down here that I'm going to skip out on as well. I'm not going to end up using any goblins in this case um, to get one star. I don't, I don't really care about the trophies. If I happen to win, that's good because it raises mine up. Um, and oh look, there's our loot bonus. So we did get placed in our league last time, so that is awesome. Let's uh, take 177,000 and head on home. Uh, that's actually a pretty good one. Um, definitely happy to find that. I did have my clan castle guys. I try not to use them though, just because... Uh, well, partially, this clan is not, actually not my normal clan, so that does contribute. So I try not to request too much when I'm just visiting. And I do try to donate, so I've probably donated more than I've requested here, which is definitely you want to be sure to do, because when you might leave at any time just because you're visiting, yeah, be sure not to want to impose on them. Now, taking out the last of these ones right here, uh, let's leave the gold mine. By taking out the defenses. We will start placing our central stuff. Although I guess first we should probably queue up an army. So to do that, let's see what we need. Uh, didn't end up using wall breakers. Um, so I might as well... Gotta do the minions first. Let's do the minions before I forget about those. So, five minions. Those proved very effective at getting those gold mines. Didn't have to deploy as many archers on the top right side of that last base. So, thank you, minion. That's why I keep them around. Only ten supply worth, but you know what? Does the job very nicely. Also got some good damage. So, basically, buffed up archers that uh, won't be shot by cannons. Alright, so, got minions. I think I'm going to do one more wall breaker. Take it up to six. So, we'll do that. In terms of archer to barbarian ratio. Thirty barbarians? I think I want some more than that. So, let's do ten more in each of these roughly. Uh, that was four minutes of Barbarian, so let's actually do it by time. So that's four minutes as well. Let's do five minutes because I forgot I had a wall breaker in there. Okay, that's five minutes. Then let's queue up archers in these ones for five minutes and see how that leaves us in terms of 200 to 200. Um, I think this would be perfect. Uh, a bit light, actually. So I'm going to go cancel out I'm going to cancel out one out of each of these to even it out, and that means they'll all finish at the same time. Uh, yeah, I'll just cancel out one of these. I was thinking about maybe just canceling another archer instead, but it's all right. All right, so after that, got to add queue up more troops to start completing. Um, they won't have like to start training for the next attack that follows this next attack. <laughs> A little convoluted right there, but uh, that right there, that should do the job. So that's going to be relatively soon, so maybe I won't attack right as, soon as, right as soon as it's done, get some good building done first. But, speaking of building, let's go get at it. So right here, we have the center of our base. Um, this uh, I know is in the center because I measured it out last time, but if you uh, don't know what's the center, you can uh, count it on the sides using buildings as your measuring stick, so good tip right there. I won't demonstrate it this time. I've demonstrated it in other base build videos, so perhaps go check those out if you aren't sure exactly how to find the center and you want to be in the center. Actually, being in the center is not super critical. All right, so what do I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to start out by doing everything in a double wall section. So what does this mean? This means that um, there'd be two compartments in each situation. So let's do this. So if I do that right there, that's a double compartment, and then I bring in a critical central defense. So mortars and wizards are going to be the first ones that I do. So just like that, if I take these walls and just finish this off, I think that this is going to be the basic building block that I use for this base. So I have mentioned that I was going to do a resource-focused base in the last video, and this indeed is going to be that. So I don't have my town hall in the center, but instead we'll do this. Now, so this being the basic building block, that leaves me with a couple of interesting options. So how the the most interesting, the most critical actually, is how the these building blocks are going to connect to one another. And I'll sort of demonstrate here by placing out uh, buildings around. So if I do this right here, this is uh, obviously in line. Um, let's not do this. Yeah, let's do gold mines just as a demonstration uh, right there. 
And then let's bring in wizard towers and more mortars. So I'm not actually going to do this. I'm going to explain why I'm not going to do this. So if I surrounded this in walls right here, it'd be efficient wall-wise. But, uh, and it would be good by centralizing defenses and centralizing storages. All the critical ones are here in the center. So why do I not want to do this? Well, it all comes down to wall breakers and how wall breakers, with their splash damage especially, are interacting with the new buildings. So not only will they ignore worthless walls, um, by which I mean sort of like lines of walls or compartments that are open, or at least they will for the most part when they're not glitched out a little bit, but right here they are going to be very clever in uh, how they work, and they will attack corner walls. Uh, and if they attack a corner wall, that means they'd bust into both these compartments at the same time. And perhaps if there's four compartments all coming together right here, so you see this, um, imagine walls filling up this gap right here. Uh, actually, it'd be right here. So yeah, imagine, imagine walls filling up right here and right here. That would make this single corner wall a critical wall. So if wall breakers attack that, they would open up and connect all four of these compartments suddenly. So I don't want that to happen. I don't want these single corners to be shared by four compartments. Ideally, they're all going to be shared by three. Three is uh, the number that we're looking for. Because uh, just mathematically is how it works out. Uh, t if it's shared by two compartments, it's just a normal wall. If it's shared by one, it's an exterior wall. So three is the most uh, optimal way to do it. So what we're going to do is actually this. So we're going to alternate this here and here. And what this is going to do is it means we're going to have a single set of walls right here and a single set of walls right here. So these compartments will alternate just like so. Um, as you'll notice, my basic building block, it's replicated here and it's replicated here. In terms of actually placing what buildings where, I have a ton of flexibility to adjust it later. So I'm not going to worry about that actually too much uh, for now. So instead, we are going to focus on placing walls. Now, in terms of the actual levels of the walls, we're not going to worry about that too much either. So I'm just going to go ahead and place them out here. And I think this will actually be pretty fast compared to some of my other base builds. But we are just going to haul these guys out here and connect them. Or uh, connect them in part, at least. So this here is a good tip. Just throw this in here. Oh, does that not fit? Oh, it doesn't fit because this one stupid one in the end. All right, there, that should fit. We're going to bring this in here. And then we're going to take these walls and redirect them. And that will allow us to open up and put another compartment right in the middle. So then we can, for example, just right now, temporarily put this here. And let's put a wizard next to it. I've got more mortars and wizards, and I'm going to place all of them first. Now, something I also want to place initially is a clan castle, so I, I'll bring that in in just a minute. But uh, that'll hold off for a second longer. Put in these walls here, and there's that. So I think you guys can sort of see how it's coming together. You can sort of see how it uh, will sort of build out. So it isn't perfectly symmetrical. Um, as you can see from this right here, this set of three lines up with the edge of this uh, rather than like in between the two. But uh, that's fine. The idea is just to keep the wall breakers from doing any more damage than they possibly could. Uh, when I get towards the outside, I think I'm going to do... I might do some sm smaller single compartments depending on how my number of walls works out. Alright, let's go ahead and put stuff in here and just keep on going. Let's bring out the clan castle before I forget. Uh, any longer. Let's request some troops. How many troops do we have? Uh, we're five short. So I'll just put this in next. And I'm going to put in all of my core central defenses. So what do we have? We've got one of this, two of these, and only one of these. Where's our other gold mine? It's around here somewhere. There it is. Thank you, gold mine. Let's see, our army is now complete. So we can go attack soon, which I think I'll do in just a minute. Um, like I said, for this central part, we're only going to be focusing on building it out initially. Um, we'll focus on exactly where stuff goes in a minute. Because I mean, like I was like, oh, if I want, my, I want uh, something else here. We can just go swap, swap, and swap. If I decide later that that's uh, critical, we'll look at the radiuses and how exactly stuff will be attacked later on. For now, we're more just doing the basic layout. All right, let's clean up these last few spare walls around the sides, and then I think we'll go and attack again. Yes, that sounds like a fun thing to do. 
Alright, that's that for now. I hope you guys can start seeing it come together. We will continue fleshing it out in uh, future videos and perhaps after this attack. I think after this attack, though, I will break it into another part, so yes. Alright, let's check this army. This army looks good, so let's go ahead and queue up replacements. So I do have some queued. Gotta make sure I have enough. That's plenty of archers. Anywhere north of 20 is good. This is not enough uh, giants, though, so... 20 archers is good for that. And then we'll do barbarians for the other two. Let's just do 40 total. And we'll see how many we use, and then we can adjust afterwards. Or I'll probably do that off video, is the way it turns out. And then we're good. Now, why do you want to queue up stuff like that? Well, you want to be sure to queue up stuff like that because as soon as you start attacking, you'll have room in your army camps. That means that stuff will start completing, which means you can attack more quickly because that stuff will start completing already. So that's perfect news right there for me and definitely what I'm looking for. Could attack this guy for a bit of gold. All the gold mines are outside the walls, but you know what? 25,000 gold just isn't really worth it. If it was 50,000, yeah, I would definitely consider it. I wouldn't necessarily say for sure, but just it depends on how many units I have to deploy and how much reward I will get. Hum, 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 this base here. 75,000 is not bad. If it ha if it was primarily in the gold mines, I would go for it. However, I can actually tell that it's not, so let me explain why. So first, look on the top left. Uh, about 80,000 of both resources. The thing to take away is it's equal. Now, if I look at the gold mines, this gold mine and the, or gold storage, this gold storage and this gold storage both show up as empty. So I can't actually tell how much is in them versus the gold mines. Now, uh, this elixir storage and this elixir storage, though, have a bit of resources. So that shows there's at least some resources in these. Now, remember back at the beginning, I said that there's roughly 80,000 of each in the top left up here. Well, what this means is, because that these elixir have some in them, and they're roughly equal to the total amount, that means that these gold mines do as well. So, I can accurately determine that at least some of the gold is going to be in the gold mines, and probably most of it. That means I can't raid just the mines and expect to get a good amount. Now, you'll notice I did have to hit uh, Surrender right there. However, I didn't actually lose trophies. You can go back and check the math if you're unsure, but uh, no, I did not. Now, this base right here, ooh -hoo, this is going to be good. Alright, so there's several weaknesses, and there's several reasons why I want to attack this. First, 170,000 gold. Oh yeah, that's a big win. I want that. Secondly, um, uh, they've, they've got a couple critical defenses that are upgrading. So they've got two mortars right here and here, uh, which are active. Wizard Tower's under construction, Wizard Tower's under construction, Mortar's under construction. All of that combined means I can attack from this bottom right side and go for these gold storages very, very, very easily. Yes, so this person should not have upgraded two wizards and a mortar at once. I'd say one of each, one mortar, one wizard at the same time. You can do other defenses beyond that, but your splash damage ones especially. So we're going to check, I mean, check for Clan Castle. Clan Castle doesn't really matter a ton to us right now. Uh, we have primarily infantry, which means uh, we are very good at handling killing Clan Castle guys. So as expected, there were guys. This guy looks to me to be very active. So I was not surprised to see Clan Castle guys whatsoever coming out. Oops, I meant to deploy Barbarians right there. Didn't switch successfully. You probably saw, Some of you might have seen me click even. So you don't want to deploy too many guys uh, because you don't want them to all group up in front of the mortars because while there are only a few, uh, there are some. Now, we can do wall breakers to help out. So that's going there. Actually didn't want to go there. I wanted to target that. So that's better targeted. Sweet. It destroyed it. And then we can bring in some more guys to follow up. Now I'm going to bring in uh, three more wall breakers. Only two is technically necessary, but one might die, so I want to be prepared for that situation. I target them so that they go right towards the center. And perfect. Exactly what I was going for. We're going to bring in some goblins, just in case that's needed to help out. But I don't think that will really be necessary. And uh, this should just do a good job. I mean, it's just gutting them. The fact that these two wizards are not here means that we can just waltz in and start getting resources for free. I think I'll bring in some more archers to uh, start targeting those storages. Um, I could do minions as well, but I don't think that will be very significant in terms of the amounts that I would get. See, with no splash damage, these archers are left alive and just keep shooting away. So that's looking good. Now, I could attack and pick off the town hall if I wanted. I don't really care about it though, and we just got the last collector, or the last storage. This is so hard to say. And that leaves just resources in the mines and collectors. So as you can see, that is very, very few, so this guy has been on very recently. 
uh, 4,000 gold is not really worth it to me to attack super heavily to get into there and get it. I'll just let these archers that are already deployed just get a, get a little bit more. Um, I guess I could deploy goblins. You know what? Yeah, let's do it. We'll deploy goblins. So, 5,000 resources versus 15 goblins. That, to me, is worth it. Uh, also, because it'll be off video, you guys won't have to wait through it to train. So, I'll cut out after this section, and we'll just get, uh, I'll train it up afterwards and take a short break and get a drink of water, because I've been talking for mm, probably 50 minutes straight right now, so my voice is getting a little sore, and I'm a little thirsty. So, that right there is going to wrap it up, and that's all we need. Got all the gold. Well, you see 900 gold. Actually, this is interesting. So 900 gold is left over while this video times out, uh, the attack times out. That's all going to be in the town hall. Well, the town hall holds a thousand. Well, what does that mean? That means there's maybe only 900 in it? No, actually that means there's a full thousand in the town hall, but the 900 means that's after the penalty for me attacking a town hall seven. And so that means it's a 10% penalty to go down from a thousand elixir to 900 elixir. So just something a little clever to see right there, and with our bonus, we actually scored 170,000 gold right there, which was pretty good. So in these first four attacks, I have managed to get more than 100,000 each time, and actually more than 140,000 each time, with this last one and uh, some of the others actually being pretty darn good in terms of the amount I got. Didn't actually expect to get quite that much, so happy to see that. Alright guys, so that's going to wrap up part 2 of my base build. If you uh, have not caught part 1, why don't you go check it out. I have some attacks, I have some strategy. As you can tell, it's not all about building, it's all about uh, all sorts of in-game strategy and uh, attacking and uh, changing stuff up. In the last one, I especially talked about some new update stuff and how I'm changing both my base and my army composition. So you know what, maybe you guys will find it interested find it interesting. Alright, so to wrap it up, thank you guys very much for watching. This has been part two. If you guys have not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. I try to put out Clash of Clans videos every single day. And the future ones will be out soon, so subscribe for more. And if you guys are already subscribed, thank you very much for your ongoing support. I really do appreciate your likes, comments, and of course, views. So please keep those up. Thank you very much, and have a great day.